kinds of sounds going on this morning. How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Don't really have much of an agenda today other than the fact that I know I'm getting out on the boat. I'm gonna take the little boat with me. I am bringing some fishing poles, rods rather, and uh, I'm gonna bring the dive gear as well. Never really know what I'm gonna run into out there. Just gonna try and get out and enjoy the day. So I figured I'd bring you along. Let's rock and roll. So this is a cool little spot uh, just around the corner from our house. Whoop. I've never actually been in here to fish. We just come over on the beach. Well, kind of the beach. Um, but I've never actually come over here with the intention of fishing or spearfishing. As you can see, I don't know if the camera picked it up, but there was a ton of bait right here at the mouth, so I'm gonna get the cast net out. So the last time I went fishing out of the Ginu, it was actually um, pilchards that I caught. And I talked about my net size. And just kind of because I didn't know what I'd be getting into, I brought my small mesh again, it's 3 16 But those actually didn't look like pilchards, those look like what we call mahua. Um, which don't stay as don't stay alive as well um, but even as dead bait they're still a great bait they're good to chum with the snappers grunts groupers everything pretty much absolutely destroys them so i was coming around to the end here to turn around and look at all the snappers this is super cool old sunken boat of some sort but I'm not sure if the camera picks it up but there are some big ones coming out from underneath it wow that is cool maybe if we can catch some bait we'll uh drop them back here this looks like a good time A lot of these are hard heads. What I want is the mahua on the bottom. There's a lot of pilchards in there. A lot of them are pilchards. Wow. So I thought it was all mahua on the surface, but um, turns out just underneath them was what we call pilchards. These are actually sand keys, which I can't remember if I've talked about in the past. Same, similar bait. Sand keys are just a little more delicate, but. I think we've got enough bait, let's go fishing. All right. I'll show you what we're working with here real quick. So I've showed you pilchards in the past. Whoop. These are actually called sand key. I don't know if the camera will pick this up. They've got a little bit of yellow on their face and kind of down their body. They're still a pilcher, just a different type. 
These are actually all hard heads. I don't really want those. Let me show you something real quick. I'm gonna grab a couple. And look at the mangroves start to get fired up. <laughs> this should be fun. <laughs> this is gonna be a blast. Let's see some bigger ones right here. Lots of small ones, but let's see if we can locate some a little bigger. Pretty much fished this rig about a million times. It's the same thing I always use, but just in case this is your first time watching, got about, and you don't need this, this is actually from yellowtailing. I've got about 20 feet of 15 pound fluoro as my leader. And I'm gonna take a little 16th ounce jig head. And yes, it is hot if you were wondering. It was a nice breeze today, but I'm tucked up again, uh, tucked, bleh, tucked up kind of away from it. It's the uni. Nothing fancy there. You just saw that. <laughs> that was a bear hook. I have a feeling. I have a feeling the bite is going to be on back here. That was literally <laughs> a bear hook, no bait. Mangrove snapper. Left me a little present there. Lots of small ones here. Maybe kind of tricky to get through to the bigger fish. Not a bad one. Watch your fingers around these snappers. They call them snappers for a reason. Out of curiosity. So these where I am only has to be 10 inches. I'm going to show you here. That is 12 right there. This ruler is 12. I'm in Gulf State water, so only has to be 10, but I'm keeping fish to eat, so that guy's coming home with me. And it is not 10 everywhere, to be clear. Some areas it's 10, some areas it's 12. I've been here about 20 minutes and there's a few nice keepers around but I just can't can't seem to get through to the big ones so 
super cool find, but I think I'm going to keep moving. This looks very nice. I have yet to fish in here. But it looks pretty. water I'm not sure if the camera picked that up that's 12 inches all day so what I did was I think the water's so clear um, I think that weighted jig is a little too much a little too visible so I scaled back down to a bare hook Down to a bare hook and pitched it out on the surface. He came right up and whacked it. We are getting there slowly but surely. come in and look at it but he just wasn't sold we're gonna move along see if we can find any big ones who aren't smart yet tide um, there's not as much going on in here as I thought there'd be so we're gonna press on to the next As fishing goes, sometimes you struggle a little bit. Hit about six spots. I've got two fish in the boat. I need a few more. I'm trying to gather supplies for the week, but a lot of people ask me if I prefer fishing or spear fishing. I truthfully enjoy both. I've been fishing a lot longer than I've been spear fishing, but when time is of the essence, I'm gonna have to go with spear fishing because I would have been done a couple hours ago. It's three o'clock. I've been out here since ten. But sometimes that's just fishing. I think that's half the fun. So give this one more go. I've got some water moving through here. We'll pitch some live baits up under here, see if there's anybody home. And as you can tell, the water's just really clear today which 
in my opinion, isn't really ideal for fishing, but... Whoa! That was quick. Maybe we're onto something here. A lot of my baits are starting to die. These guys are real sensitive. not the hardiest of baits. Because I'm kind of freelining this guy, I'm more so watching my line than anything because I, there's little loops or bends in the line and if I, if I just watch them tighten up real quick, I know something's eating it and kind of ran. Oh, ah! Oh! Goliath grouper. Look at him. Hopefully the camera picks that up. That is unreal. It's about a 15, 20 pound Goliath. I don't know if the camera picked him up. I got an idea. That guy is legal by the way, so we're gonna keep him. I'm just looking for them just a little bigger. Again, I'll repeat myself there. Only got to be 10 inches, but I typically don't keep them under 12. Goliath to come in. That's a lazy Goliath. He wants an easy meal. Check them. We will check. Twelve on the nose. Coming home with me, buddy. Sorry.
Well, if you know anything about me, you know that my curiosity is intrigued now. And I'm going in the water. Welcome back underwater, everybody. Um, I'm actually not going to do a full narrative on this dive. I'm just going to kind of let you guys enjoy the scenery. Don't have a ton to talk about, but it was an absolutely beautiful dive. So I'm going to shut my trap and let you guys enjoy. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm happy to get to them.
so many dead trees had fallen and created quite a bit of structure for all these fish. That's why I just absolutely love diving the, diving the spots that I fish. That's the biggest fish of the day right there. The rest of these guys look small compared to this one. Gosh, I can't even get my hand on one. Love it. Love it, love it. I have got plenty of fish to eat. Not actually going to do a cooking segment on this one, so this is the end of the video. I appreciate you guys coming along. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one.